Welcome back to the True Church of Jesus Christ with his Latter-day Saints. And I don't even know where to begin in this episode. I'm kind of chuckling here, but I'm going to try to explain how the early formations of mind. So when God made the light and the dark, it doesn't mean necessarily the sky. It means the good, so all the good traits, but also the evil traits and this mind substance. So men have minds, and this mind substance fell into an ignorant root of nature. So I'm going to try to explain the paraphrase of Shem, because that's what this early light sort of expelled its mind substance into this dark root of Satan, when there was no man yet formed on the earth. So that's also what it explains in the scriptures, that there was no men formed yet. So before there was the fields, God made the heaven and the earth, and he made it empty, formless, and void. But the Spirit of God hovered above the waters. So this light and dark, or this spirit that was hovering above the light and the dark, that spirit is infinite consciousness. And it looked into the chaos of darkness, of Satan, and this light substance, so this inconceivable spirit was also in the darkness as well. And God, as you can see, he separates the sheep and the goats, those that follow him. So that's why there's a race of ignorant fallen people. As St. Paul would say, the Gentiles. So there's just people out there in this creation that believe that they're just from this creation. Or they're from their parents, or they're from their DNA. You see Adam, as it says in the scriptures, I think in Matthew 1 and in Luke 1 or in Mark 1, there's a lineage of people. So all the way back to Abraham, see, to Shem, Shem's also a part of this list. They're all people that fell away from a higher spiritual realm. So the Gentiles are not from this higher spiritual realm, as St. Paul says. So that's Romans chapter 12, verse 11. Are all the Gentiles fallen and lost forever? See how there's Gentiles and quote-unquote Jews? Adam is not a Jew. Abraham is not a Jew. Well, throw that word Jew away, and God gave them a promise. See, they're a part of a promise that they came from above. And the reason why there was a fall from this light higher was because of Satan himself. So what it says here is that there's the Lord of the vineyard, and the Lord of the vineyard cast this wild olive branch. <laughs> so uh, Jacob 5 in the Book of Mormon, uh, verse 3, Behold, thus says the Lord, the house of Israel, like unto a tame olive tree, which a man took and nourished, in his vineyard and grew it and waxed old and began to decay so this is that how you could say a fallen man that god planted a group of souls or you could say the gentiles with satan and we'll get into the pearl of great price so this is chapter two and it says that uh satan whom had commanded in the name of my only begotten son is the same which was from the beginning and he became before me, saying, Behold, here I am. Send me. I will be thy son, and I will redeem this mankind. That one soul shall not be lost, and surely I will do it for thine honor. But then, behold, my only begotten son, see this higher power. That's why men believe that, there, well, this is how the darkness now operates. When there is the light in the beginning, the light is faith in the spirit that hovers above the waters. So what do the waters mean? It means mortal consciousness. And mortal consciousness, or this light that fell into this ignorant root of Satan, mixes with hell. So God casts Satan down into hell. And here's one of the mysteries I learned in the book one and two of Adam and Eve. So when Adam now fell out of the spiritual realm, see that light? It fell also by the temptations of the devil into the mortal contamination into the mortal waters 
where the Spirit of God, the infinite consciousness, the one God, hovers above the mortal creation. So that's why people don't believe there's a higher power or a God that's above the manifestations. And that's why there's uh, fallen people that believe in idols and statues, forces of nature, things of their own imagining. You see this darkness? That's this early formation of this mind that the Gentile or the fallen man has. Like he believes in Zeus, pantheons, this, that, like these higher beings from this realm that's tied into the material manifestation. But even now, men don't know if these things are real. See, this darkness, it's just a not knowing. That's why God calls it an ignorant root. It's ignorant of Jesus Christ, my only begotten Son, chosen from the beginning. <laughs> Verse 3, therefore, because Satan rebelled, and he sought to destroy the agency of man, which I, the Lord God, had given him. You see, I learned in the books 1 and 2 of Adam and Eve that when Adam fell, there was already a concoction of clay pots. And that's what the paraphrase of Shem teaches, is that out of Hades, out of the mind of Satan, out of darkness, darkness formed the earth. And the earth has been tied to hell. And Satan already generated living entities or clay pots. God calls them clay pots because they don't have the Holy Spirit. Or they don't believe or have... See, the clay pots don't have faith. Or the Gentiles. The Gentiles came first in creation. Now, creation's somewhat of a mystery. In the Mayan Popol Vuh, <laughs> I learned this in my early 20s by Michael Tessarian. I have a lot of credit to thank for him because it all came together once God gave me the light in 2022 to put all this together, how the early formations of the universe started. So just like Rudolf Steiner's work, the evolution of consciousness in his occult science. It's exactly just like the book one and two of Adam and Eve. That man were in a higher realm first and they had a bright nature. That these... Uh, nature forces generated so satan and his nature forces were already generated the earth the the sun and the moon see how the sun and the moon were formed were in the mayan popol vuh mysteries and this is what people call the hero twins myth or legend so the earth was just this misty darkness in the beginning with an invisible light substance so men did not have bodies that's what you have to understand here is this fallen race of man. This is before or when men were just a thought in the mind of God. And that thought permeated matter or the how spirit formed into matter. So how God's thought condensed into matter. And I'm trying to get this uh, scripture out of here from the Colburn Bible. We'll go to the first chapter right at the beginning. He who preceded all existence alone and his strange abode created of uncreated light, which re remains ever unextinguishable, and no understandable eye can behold it. So that's this higher light, or like in the first chapter of Genesis, this light that shines in the darkness, or that hovers above the waters. So it explains God here in the beginning, who lived in his strange abode. <laughs> And uh, it's by he himself alone was able to manifest from nothingness. So that's very important to understand that this creation was generated from this nothingness, from a thought in God's mind, from within his being. So that's how this early substance of mind formation started. But there's, as you can see, a spirit that hovers above the mortal or the darkness waters a higher consciousness so this man fell or you could say God planted this man in his vineyard so the Lord of the vineyard planted a wild olive branch and he said unto his servant it grieves me that I should lose this tree so again this fallen man that God planted in the vineyard with Satan as it says in the pearl of great price Satan wanted to 
be a savior to this fallen man that he generated in the beginning. So we'll go to the hero twins. I don't mean to jump all over, but how there was a platform, an earth to begin with. Well, that's very difficult to explain because that's the paraphrase of Shem. So we'll go to the paraphrase of Shem and we'll talk about the doctrine. It says that a little bit more better. How There is an early formation of light and an early formation of darkness. So this uh, spirit, the son of the infinite light, spoke to Shem. And Shem, since you're from an unmixed power, you are the first being upon the earth. So now that's when this fallen Adam, remember, from the spiritual realms, was a part of the promise that he's from the higher light, an infinite consciousness. So now this son of the infinite consciousness from Jesus Christ tells him about the early formations of matter. Like you could, you could say what happened before there was absolutely nothing. See, when God, how he made something from nothing. These are the mysteries of how, from the thoughts of the infinite consciousness, God made this universe, which is tangible, but from nothing. And that's the mystery of this devil. It doesn't have a power. It's a nothing, or it's a shadow. So in the 91st Psalm, those that dwell in the shadow of the Almighty know these ancient truths, or they're the remnant. You see this wild olive branch of souls that God cast in the nether regions or into hell with Satan, a remnant. So how Adam in the spiritual realms had a bright nature, and then even that dragon tempted Eve. So we'll go to the Quran. Oh, I just uh, closed the chapter there, but it's chapter 20 of the Quran and how this devil, right at the beginning, so chapter 20, verse 114, high above all is God, the king of truth. Be not in haste with the Quran before its revelation to you is completed, but say, O oh my Lord, advance me in knowledge. He already beforehand taken the covenant of Adam, but he forgot, see Adam, this as Shem, or, or you could say this uh, son of the infinite light is telling Shem that he's in this ignorant root, this covenant that Adam forgot about, the bright nature with God. So in the books one and two of Adam and Eve, right, God planted that bright nature in this ignorant root. So when Adam was expelled from the garden, from the higher spiritual realms, he degraded into an animal body. So that's when he was given a tonic of flesh. And it explains in those chapters of books one and two of Adam and Eve of how this forgetfulness happened. Adam used to remember the angels in the garden, but then when he fell into earth conditions, he had to begin to eat. And this is, you could say, a divine revelation of uh, how, like let's say the Darwinian theory, they believe that man spontaneously came from apes, a spontaneous evolution. Well, God had to do that to Adam because this fallen Adam did not have the metabolism to process food into energy. And God had to put that into the fallen Adam while he was on earth because man have dominion. See the bright nature, this exalted nature that it, it explains? Adam did not need to drink water or eat food. He had an infinite consciousness. See this forgetfulness. And Adam fell... He started to, remember, this is like, you could say the clairvoyant consciousness. So this is how the promised people still have a remembrance of God. Because Adam still had a remembrance of God when he fell down. But then he had to eat food. And that, that's why the fasting is so important. So Matthew chapter 6, he emphasizes fasting. Because fasting breaks us away from earth conditions. And brings this clairvoyant consciousness back. Prayer or the Holy Spirit, which Adam was remembering. He's like, oh, I can remember the garden. See, as it explains in the Quran, Adam forgot. And we found him on his apart, no firm resolve. Why did he have no firm resolve? Because he listened to Eve. He didn't listen to God. So that's another part of his forgetfulness, of how this infinite consciousness, or this light, fell into darkness, a forgetfulness. So verse 116, we said to the angels, prostrate yourselves before this Adam. They prostrated, but not Satan, not Iblis. Remember, 
Adam is not the whole race of mankind. In the books one and two of Adam and Eve, God tells Adam to stay away from people. See, J Satan, or this ignorant root, it generated the earth. The hero twins mythology and the pop of voo I don't mean to be bouncing around, but the sun, just like a pregnant woman delivers a baby, the earth came, or it basically gave birth to the sun. That's how the sun was made. It was made from the earth. The Colburn Bible explains that as well, too. And the that's what this infinite consciousness, the son of the infinite consciousness is telling Shem, that Satan in hell, remember, formed this earth. So that's what the ancient Mayans, or the, you could say this ancient race of people, before or even after the Catholic Church, that's why they, this uh, Book of Mormon revealed the Church of the Devil the Catholic Church and that's why that church has been destroying natives all throughout its inception because it wants to destroy this ancient knowledge you could say the knowledge of Shem if you read the book of Shem or the paraphrase of Shem as it's called it explains what I'm trying to tell you is that Adam or a race or like as it says in the Pista Sophia the resurrection knowledge of Jesus Christ that there is a race of people that came from the spiritual realms and they fell into matter or into the clay pots that Satan formed already because God in the books 1 and 2 of Adam and Eve tells Adam to stay away from these people these Gentiles as St. <laughs> Paul calls them but you see he didn't call Adam a Jew he called Adam a promise or a covenant as it says in the Quran Remember, we gave you a covenant. So verse 115. Remember, the covenant, doctrines and covenants. of, uh, You could say the Book of Mormon crew, the new revelations of Jesus Christ. So God gives us a covenant. Not, a, not you could say, what the clay pots believe in, of religion or something. No, God gave Adam a promise, a covenant. That's very important. So, because Adam failed the covenant and f had no firm resolve, he fell into this darkness. And that's what this infinite consciousness, uh, Derkadaz is what his name is, is telling Shem. And Shem is one of the survivors of Noah, his sons, that came from this light that believed in, see, Noah believed in the higher consciousness. And that's what also God said in the books one and two of Adam and Eve. He told Adam that there was going to be a flood. So the book of Genesis is so important in describing this race of the fallen light, not the fall. See, this fallen mankind already existed, the Gentiles. God told Adam after he fell from the spiritual worlds to stay away from the Gentiles. Satan generates the Gentiles. Or you could say had the mind of what Shem is. See, men just have the knowledge of good, passions, and ignorance, or this light that was separated from the darkness in the beginning. Derkadaz is this son of the infinite consciousness, or the son of Jesus Christ, who is the infinite consciousness. The, the, the light that shines in the darkness, or the Holy Spirit hovering above Satan, which now in the early formations of man, they only had mind substance. That's how far back this Popol Vu is. Is that the hero twins defeat, see this theme of Satan, the theme of life, has always been a battle between good and evil. You can't avoid it. So that's also when Adam fell into this world. Cain versus Abel, the lawless one. Cain was the lawless one who did not follow the law of God. But Abel did. And that early formation was even before there was a material body. So God's creation, as it says in the, well, this is Rudolf Steiner's work, how man were just a thought substance, and how that thought substance, or light and darkness, see, the thought substance knows good and evil, light and dark. That's why there's this ancient battle in the Popol Vuh. 
But out of this ancient battle, the sun formed. So out of the earth, the hero twins defeated evil and the sun formed. It's very strange. I still don't understand this quite fully. But that's how the constellations are formed. It says in the book that these hero twins walked up to 400 children in this village. And the children were offered as sacrifice. See, sacrifice, the Christ also sacrificed himself. Sacrifice is a huge important in this constellation of things that I don't quite understand. <laughs> but these 400 children were the stars in the sky afterwards. They were reborn as constellations. So that's how the constellations formed or the heavens formed. They formed out of the earth and out of the substance of darkness, the chaos, where this ignorant root was casted down, or Satan. So this is how Adam had no form, form resolve, and the angels told Satan to prostrate himself. So verse 117 of the Quran, we said, O Adam, verily, this is an enemy to you and your wife, so let him not get both of you out of the garden. Well, that, well it's too late now. Since Adam is out of the garden and material creation, God is telling him to stay away from a group of people, the Gentiles, because they don't have a God. So we'll go to St. Paul, too, because St. Paul's the minister to the Gentiles. That's why this is so important to understand, that there's kind of two races of people. One that have the knowledge of the infinite God and the Son, Jesus Christ, or the Word of God, as it known in the past, or just the straight Gentiles that had no God. Or, as it says in Romans 12, verse 11, they're forever in a lost and fallen state? No, not at all. That's because Jesus Christ, also his blood, shares the promise. See, the, the, the clay pots in the beginning that Satan formed, that God told Adam to stay away from, they did not have the light of God in them. They were just generated from the earth. So the Colburn Bible says that as well, too. There was just an, a life force of man, or a life energy and this early man that lived upon the earth, so this is uh, chapter 2 of the Colburn Bible, the birth of man. So this earth spirit breathed into him the spirit of life that he might live. So this is how like the Gentiles were formed. They, did, they were only formed from the earth. But man, as it says, when young, lear learned and lived only to eat and drink and to fornicate. <laughs> so these adulterers and fornicators, that's what they're from. They're just from the earth. They're not the children of God. That's one of the biggest revelations that's been given to me. So for being conscious, oh, see, remember, being conscious only of the earth. You can read this yourself. The chapter, it's not too far into the Colburn Bible. It's the second chapter of the book. <laughs> now there's, remember, these clay pots that Satan generates in the beginning, remember, the, the Spirit of God, you could say, projected a thought into the chaos, ignorance and darkness, hell, Satan cast down out of the dra out of the heavens, out of God's thought, projected this dragon into Hades first, into hell. And then as Durkades is saying, the son of the infinite consciousness, revealing to Shem, is out of hell, the pattern of See, God created the man, male and female, spiritual. The earth, spiritual first. That's why he created things empty, formless, and void first. But they had to come into existence. And Satan is how those things came into existence. That's why this matter is an illusion. It's not the real substance. So this early formation of this earth is a pattern from higher realms already above and you could say this God like the Lord of the vineyard cast this ignorant root or the wild olive branch see the Satan cast man away from the belief of God or the faith of God as he says in the Quran I will lay them off of the straight way I will make them on the crooked paths so that's also what he tells Adam in the books one and two of Adam and Eve I will take you away or I will take your seed away. The seed of faith in the Christ. As he was revealing to Adam. That 
I will come down. And, the, and not only that, but I will take a form of the man. So that's in the chapters of 1 and 2 in Adam and Eve on the YouTube channel there. You can check that out in the description. I will come down <laughs> and be crucified for your sake to bring you back into the kingdom of God. So in the Gospel of Nicodemus, that's actually when the Savior had to come down into hell. The light, see, the Christ was crucified on the cross. But it's the infinite consciousness that's, <laughs> it can't be crucified. That's the proof of the resurrection or that the power of God. It's in all things and through all things, even over the power of death. So that's how the Christ descended back into this hell that Adam was cast into, or this forgetfulness, or even the ignorant root itself. And it had to break the brass doors or shine its light in the 12 chambers of hell as well and free the captives of hell and ascend them back into the kingdom of God or the knowledge of higher realms that the Gentiles now have a share with. That's what St. Paul is and grafting yourself back onto the tree of life. The Gentiles, as I'm trying to explain, even early in the beginning, did not have God in their lives. They were not fashioned with God, as the Colburn Bible says. They're just fashioned with knowing things of the earth. They were only conscious of the earth, knowing earthly things and earthly ways. Now, we'll go to the Colburn Bible, verse 2. The Spirit of God, see, <laughs> the first chapter of Genesis, again, it says the Spirit of God moved over the face of the earth, but was not the but it was not the earth. See, all things and all things were in God, but not the earth. It could not be apart from anything. So that's how this uh, early formations of matter was not even formed yet. The Spirit of God still hovers above all things. And uh, now the earth had no earthly substance. And it could not grasp any fruits, for he had no hands, and he could not drink its waters. So this is the Spirit of God now, how it, or the light, formed itself into Adam and formed itself into material creation, so it can experience the earth. So this is how, like you could say, the infinite consciousness came down and had to be materialized, the children of light or the sons of God. Because this earthly spirit, see the spirit hovers above the waters, but it could not eat and drink. It could not do those things, for he had no mouth. So Adam wasn't formed yet. This is just the early ideas of Adam. You can see how the early thought of man is so deep. He was just an early thought of God. But this is how the Holy Spirit that hovered above the waters came into the waters as the fallen children of Adam. So now, as it says, this spirit was hovering above the earth and without substance. And it had no earthly substance. And it couldn't grasp anything. He had no mouth. He could not feel the cool winds upon his skin. They show how there was a... Oh, sorry. A, a heaven man perished by the flames before the valley of Lod only taking a she-ape reaching the king. So this is now how there's the heaven man was reborn in the caverns of woe and now the spirit could taste the fruits of the earth. So this is like the early formations of Adam again. How Adam fell away from the bright nature and now was able to eat and drink because this higher consciousness wanted to come down into earth conditions. So that's the mysteries of the sons of God or the children of light. As now that this light or this spirit that was hovering above the waters, the infinite consciousness, it came down and now was able to form and fashion itself in the image and likeness of Adam. So Adam is not a representative of the fallen man. He is the infinite consciousness. See, he fell into forgetfulness. He fell away from the covenant that's very important to understand here. 
And that's why God told him to avoid the other people because they're not a part of the covenant. The early people are just earth beings with a life in them. You could say a mind with good and evil that only know how to eat and drink and fornicate. So those are the people of the statue of Daniel, the people that build the material world. That's the mystery of the people that build the material world, or the Gentiles, that don't have the Spirit of God, that don't believe God is their daily bread, or that the Spirit of God is in all things, as Christ says. Not only Christ uh, is in all things, but is in below all things, to comprehend all things. So that's how the Spirit above the waters came down and formed this infinite intelligence formed itself out of nothing and now this heaven man was reborn out of the caverns of woe <laughs> so out of difficulty strife and that's why the way is straight and narrow and few be that enter there's another mystery behind that as well because the heaven man or the Christ was born out of strife in order to feel drink and eat the fruits of the earth that came from the mind of Satan so that's the revelation of the paraphrase of Shem. All of this, as you can see in the wheel, came from the mind of Satan as he was cast down into darkness. And this is how the earth was formed. So this now spirit of God that hovers above the waters came into the earthly manifestation. So as it says, did he not find life good? Is it not all the tale of the courtyard? So that's now you could say the Adam and Eve, when Adam and Eve now are out of the garden. It's not just a tale of the courtyard, because God says now you're in a land of suffering. This, this spirit of God is still above the water. See, the word of God comes unto Adam and tells him about your fallen state. It's not all going to be the tale of the courtyard with you and your wife there copulating around. Now the sun is scorching you. This devil is after you as well, looking to kill you, as it says. See, that's how God's thought projected itself into these life circumstances. But behind the material manifestation, you could say, is the truth. That you have to know this truth. You have to gain a certain measure of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit can reveal these mysteries to you. I'm reading off of like five or six books. So these mysteries I could shape into one idea and understanding of how there was a Gentile first. You can see how they were created from the darkness of just the earth and the only new things of the earth. The early formations of this earth is that the earth gave birth to the sun, moon, and stars from its own inhabitants, the thought formations of man. The early thought formations of man created the outer external universe that's how man or this Christ is in all things as well or out of one substance man was formed and so is the universe but it's it's not just like a big bang an expulsion of matter because there's a spiritual understanding to how things work especially the mystery of how the earth came from the or the sun came from the earth it wasn't like a scientific explanation of how uh, stars formed and then kind of like a, a reverse the science tells it in a different way of how the solar system formed the earth well God tells it a different way see how darkness his spiritual thought created darkness Satan hell first and out of hell or early mind substance formed the earth and then the earth formed the universe around it so the earth isn't the center of all things. Remember, the infinite consciousness is, and it's always outside or the Holy Spirit hovering above the waters. And the waters is death, darkness, or this material creation. And the consciousness of the clay pots. So what goes on in your thinking? Yeah, most people just think about eating, drinking, and sex. That's why they don't have a measure of the Holy Spirit. That's why it's so important to understand the world that you live in. Because there's just some, most people are always just from below. They're just from the earth. 
and the earth substance, the mind substance of the human, is hell, Satan, or darkness. Not the spirit man, because you have to believe in Christ, or the infinite God. So, man was created from the earth substance alone, and he could not know the things of the earth. This is verse 5. Nor could the spirit alone subdue him. Had man not been created, who would have known God's wisdom and power? So that's also the thing too, these clay pots. That's why they're St. Paul. You could say giving the wisdom to the Gentiles. He's the minister. He's the minister of the gospel to the Gentiles. <laughs> that's what he says in verse 13 of chapter 12 of Romans. I say this now to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of you Gentiles, I glory in my ministry. So that's what it says here too. Had not these Gentiles been created, who would have known the wisdom of God? So people like St. Paul with the wisdom of God, giving them that there's a risen Christ or an infinite consciousness, the Holy Spirit, the one God. See, this is how God shares his glory with the clay pots, Emmanuel, God with us. So the infinite consciousness could be with the ones in hell, as it shows right here, which is what the earth condition is for the human, for the statue of Daniel. <laughs> All the earth condition is, is building up the material powers of this devil. Man's kingdoms. Nebuchadnezzar, Assyria, Egypt, Greece, Rome, England and now the Eagle America those are the Gentile races because they don't know God nor do they know the mysteries of God like st. Paul knows the mysteries of God see that's why this spirit wants to come down and share so it wasn't just reserved as the Christ says as Jesus Christ says it's not just reserved for the promised people or the remnant or as the Lord of the vineyard says he placed a wild olive branch Adam, a remnant of this holy light from God's spiritual realm. Because remember, the, the Gentiles, they think that they're from apes, like the Darwin th theory. They, they think they're from whatever. And what they don't have a truth. They don't have a God. That's what's so important to understand about the remnant. God's, why he sent his Jesus Christ down. Because when Adam fell... In the books one and two of Adam and Eve, the word of God tell, told Adam, I have to come down there too and, 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 and basically do my prophecy. My, <laughs> to, and then 2,000 years ago, that's when this Christ came on Golgotha <laughs> to give the promise back, the lineage of Adam, not the lineage of the Gentiles. That's the mystery of mankind. Mankind is the statue of Daniel. That just gets crushed and is enslaved. So in the Colburn Bible, in the chapters of Aloma, see, she's the children of God. She believes in the light, and God revealed his light to her. And she's wondering why all these people are enslaved under poverty, under sickness, under disease. And God says, because they're under my anvil. And I'm cracking into them my faith. See, just like the Abraham, right? In Genesis, God caused a darkness to come over Abraham, and he said his seed will go into slavery for 400 years, that they would have to be tempted by the devil in order to believe in the higher God, the higher power that smashes idols. So Satan, right? This is what, how the Gentiles believe in things, is they worship just things of the earth, like Abraham's father, stones and statues, idols. So that's why God tells us in the Ten Commandments, do not make any engraven images of these earthly things because you're not of the earth. Christ says, you are not from this world. I am not from this world. So when he's held by the power of the world, Pontius Pilate, Satan or the Antichrist, you could say, who doesn't believe in God, he's like, what's the truth? And the Christ tells him, I'm not from this realm. If I was... As they claim, I'm the king of the Jews. I'm the king of the promised people. 
the people with the light all the way from the tradition of Abraham, the promised people of Moses, the promised people of Adam, and Shem, the infinite consciousness. That's the truth. And I'm not from this realm or else my angels would come down and destroy you. Oh, see, Pilate, he tells him I'm a king, but I'm not the king of this world. See, men believe just in man power, that men are power. Caesar in Rome is power. They don't believe in the infinite consciousness is power or the all power of God. Because this early Gentile was raised just of the earthly darkness. Only in fornication and eating and drinking and worshipping Satan. Statues. Idolatry. And that's why when Adam fell into this realm. See, man, he couldn't keep his covenant with God. And fell from the higher world. So when God, or like a gardener, places a seed he placed Adam into the mortal realms. Now that seed grew out as the wild olive branch. <laughs> the Lord of the vineyard. So Matthew 13, verse 38, the Lord of the vineyard is coming back. <laughs> the second coming of Christ. Ha ha. He's going to collect the remaining people that have faith in the higher light, the infinite consciousness. So that's when the Lord of the vineyard is going to collect the light that is in the clay pots. See, that's what the mystery of us being in one of these bodies, these mortal bodies, is that first you have to be reborn for this spirit of God and suffer the hardships, as it says there when he placed Adam. See, the people, the, the Gentiles don't want to suffer hardships. They're under the beast of pleasure. They just want to have sex, drink, and that's all they see that <laughs> you can see there's two distinct people two distinct consciousness it's a war on consciousness whether men are going to follow their governments and believe in a man yeah that's also the statue of Daniel but they don't believe that God can heal or Jesus Christ or his ministry you see they're not the children of God and being around the Gentiles that's why God tells us to stay away or to do this or to follow my commandments not the rules of the Gentiles and their governments and what their doctors say because we're given a mystery now that man is just from the early root of Satan hell and eating and drinking and sex he's not from the higher man as it explains in the Colburn Bible so therefore it was God that saw something that we had to join See, now, we'll go back to the Colburn Bible here. God has to fulfill the creation. That's how he fulfills his covenant. That's how the Christ has always been anchored here in this creation. Therefore, it's been God that saw something. He had to join the earth and the spirit and was both. In his wisdom, and by the creature impulse, or sorry, the creative impulse, which governs the earth, he prepared a body. So this is how Adam was formed. From the dust of the earth. And then the Lord God breathed his breath into Adam. And Adam came up as a bright nature. And how then Adam lost that bright nature and fell into mortality. So this is how God fulfills himself in all things by being in the root of all things. So he prepared a body for man. For the body of man is holy of the earth. Behold, the great day came when the spirit, which is God, was joined with the beast, which is the earth. So that's why the body of man or his intelligence is just beastly. And that's what the word of God explains to Adam when he fell from uh, spiritual heights in the books one and two of Adam and Eve. Now you're de-evolved. Now you're forgetting the spiritual worlds. Yeah, you're forgetting the angels in the garden. Because now you're clothed with this beast of a body. And now this beast demands water and drink. And because you have to drink with the beast, it blocked man, or it transformed Adam, at least. It transformed him. It transformed his flesh into more solidified matter. Or into, you could say, the physical body. Where now he just had to depend not on the infinite consciousness of God anymore. That's when God blocked himself away. 
So that's also the Colburn, or sorry, the uh, Book of Mormon mystery, how God is blocked away from man, and that's the blood of Christ. He begins to give you back that spiritual heritage that Adam fell away from, or the bright nature. Because now the spirit had to join with the beast and eat food which is of the earth, which blocked away Adam's consciousness of higher realms. <laughs> he could not remember the angels anymore. And not only that, it literally transformed his body. It altered his form. That's what the scriptures say. That's so important to understand. So, so important to understand, which is why it's very difficult to behold or to capture spiritual consciousness. Because there's literally two different people on this earth. There's the children of God that come from the higher realms, and then there's the Gentiles that don't have knowledge of higher realms, and they're just from the earth. So, verse 7 of the Colburn Bible, chapter 2. Behold, the great day came when the Spirit of God joined the beast, and the earth riddled in labor and travail. Her mountains rocked back and forth, and her seas heaved up and down. The earth groaned in her lands and shrieked in her winds. She cried in the rivers and wept in her storms. And so this man was born, born of upheaval and strife. He came wretchedly and tumultuously, the offspring of a distraught earth. All was in discord. Snow fell in the hot wastelands, and ice covered the fertile plains. The forest became seas. Where it once was hot, now it was cold. And where no rain had fallen, now there were floods. So this man came forth. Man, the child of calamity. <laughs> so that's when God, or the word of God, comes unto Adam, and he says, Now you're in this strange land. So that's the prodigal son parable. You're in this strange, strange place. And you're far away from the infinite consciousness. So you're far away from the Father. And you have to make your way back home. You're a child of calamity, hard times. The shepherd of Hermas, or Matthew 13 parable. The seed, difficult, rough, rocky, stony areas. Man is a child of calamity because it's very difficult to survive in this creation of extremes. Man, the inheritor of a creative struggle. Man, the battleground, see, of extremes. So where are we here in time? 45 minutes? That's not too bad. I don't want to just call it quits, but that's as much as I could get into. So you guys could read the paraphrase of Shem, how the light of the spirit is in the confines of nature. So I'll just read from the paraphrase of Shem now. The light, or the spirit of the light, when the mind burdened him was astonished. And the force of this astonishment cast off the burden and returned to its heat. It put on the light of the spirit. So this is how you could say the mortal casts off the mortal and becomes immortal. Through the heat or the fiery trials. And when nature moved away, so that's the false ego now, you'll be reborn in the spirit. These are the mysteries of those that bring themselves to nothing will discover who they are. The infinite one. And when nature moved away from the power of the light of the spirit, the burden returned, and the astonishment of the light again cast itself off. And it struck the cloud, and all the clouds of darkness cried out. And they separated Hades, because this light, or this light of good, see the good shepherd knows its sheep, and the sheep are alien to this world of Hades and darkness. So that's what God consciousness is, the mission of Christ. I've come to separate you from mother, brother, sister, the generated clay pots, out of birth and death, out of the earth. I came to shed light on your fallen and dark nature. And that's how this infinite spirit is in all things. So that's why God's always been worshipped in the heart of all being. Now I hope I did that mystery good because right now my mouth is kind of like running dry like a well and that means this conversation's been done to an end but I had so much fun. It's, 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 it, now it's kind of like playing like a kid. I don't want this to end. I don't want to stop talking but for the sake of the ministry <laughs> I think we, Lucy's done enough explaining today of the mysteries between the sons of God 
and the mysteries of the Gentiles that were just straight from the earth and hellbound, worshiping things they don't understand because they don't have the infinite consciousness of God. So again, thank you very much. Until next time, take care.